Hi there, this tutorial will walk you through the basics, important features, and some tips and tricks of the Good Notes 5 app. I'll use examples to explain those features that you're most likely to use a lot. If you are looking for information about a particular feature or a tool of Good Notes 5, you can go to the description where you'll find the outline of this tutorial. You can simply jump to a specific session. Okay. Here's the home screen of Good Notes 5 when you first open it. This is where you organize your files in Good Notes. I'll get into the details of how to do so later on. Now let's create a new notebook using the plus button here. Let's name this notebook my projects. On the left side, we can change the cover here where you can see there are lots of covers to choose from or you can leave it no cover if you like. I'm gonna choose this one and right next to the cover button, there's a paper button where you can choose the um, note template you like for your notebook. Also, we can change the paper style of the uh, note template here. We can change the paper color and paper size and we can change the orientation of the paper as well. Okay, let's click create to create the notebook. Now let's go back to home screen of GoodNotes and create a folder. Then let's drag my project's notebook into this folder. As you can see under the plus button, we can import image, scan documents, etc. Study set is a new feature that is similar to a real life deck of flashcards. So you have a question card where you can put in your question and you have an answer card where you can put in the answer. Now I'm going to import a few documents as examples for the purpose of this tutorial. There are a number of ways you can import files to GoodNotes. Um, first, I'll use the import button to import a project planner PDF. As you can see on the sidebar, you can import files from your cloud storage app such as Google Drive, Dropbox. If you can't find them here, you can click the um, three dots button here and you can turn on the app here. I'm gonna import the project planner from my iPad downloads folder. Now I'll show another way to import files. So I'll go to the files app, downloads folder, where I previously downloaded a few files here. And I'm gonna import this my planner file to GoodNotes. You can either click the uh, GoodNotes app icon or scroll down and click opening GoodNotes. If these options aren't available to you, you can find it here. So um, I'm gonna import this file to the uh, tutorials folder I just created. Okay, now we have three files open in GoodNotes. You can toggle between the tabs to see the file open in GoodNotes. And you can click the cross button to close the file. You can also open the file in new window like so. This is very helpful when you need to work on two files at the same time. Okay, let's get to the toolbar. First, I'd like you to look at this pen icon at the top right corner. So it's the read-only button, which you can turn it on and off to show through the toolbar. If you have a PDF that is hyperlinked like this monthly planner, in order to make the links work, make sure the read-only button is on. Okay, let's turn off the read-only mode to have the toolbar back. Here's the pen tool. There are three pen styles, fountain pen, ball pen, and brush pen. You can change the tip sharpness and pressure sensitivity. 
On the other side, we can customize three pen sizes. So you can go from the thinnest to thickest. And we can customize our pen colors here. By default, you have three main colors, which are the ones you use a lot. You can add more if you like. Okay, I'm going to show you how to customize your color palette. So this is my color palette. You can change the uh, default color by clicking edit here. You can change the color here or from the color wheel. Or if you know the hex code of the color, you can change it right here. And you can remove color as well. You can also add new colors by clicking this button. The custom tab comes very handy if you constantly need to change your pen color, but you don't necessarily want to save these colors to your color palette. For example, I want to write a rainbow title. The history tab makes it easy to access what colors we just used. Okay, let's get to the eraser tool. So we have three sizes for our eraser tool. There are three eraser styles for us to choose from. The standard eraser does like this. The uh, precision eraser will just erase exactly the bit you want to. And the stroke eraser will erase the whole thing. If we turn on the eraser highlighter only, it will just erase the highlight bit. If we turn on the auto deselect, every time we use the eraser, it will automatically go back to the tool we previously used. Next is the highlighter tool. So by default, it always draws a straight line. You can turn this option off if you like, then it goes like this. Let's move to the uh, shape tool. You can easily draw perfect shapes with this tool. The snap to other shapes is very handy when you need to draw lines or curves with their endpoints connected to one another. If you want to draw shapes without fill color, you can turn this option off. Actually, we can use the pen tool to draw perfect shapes as well. The bit of the differences is you need to hold the pen tip to draw a perfect shape. Here's a trick. If you want to draw a shape without the outline, simply undo it. If you don't want this feature for your pen tool, you can disable it here. Okay, let's talk about the lasso tool, which I think is the fundamental tool that makes digital note taking different from traditional paper note taking. With the Lasso tool, you can move your notes wherever you like. You can copy and paste your notes.
you can delete, resize, change the color. And the taste screenshot feature means it takes a screenshot of the uh, selected area. For example, I want to share this project timeline to someone. I can just airdrop it to their Apple device. I can copy it and paste it to other notebook as well. You can resize it if you like. Convert is for when you need to convert your handwritten notes to text. The next tool is the elements tool. This tool allows us to save stickers, which are essentially pictures or notes that we frequently use for easy access. As you can see, it already comes with a bunch of stickers, or you can add your own stickers. For example, I created these sticky note stickers and have them in my files app, and I want to import them to the elements. So what I need to do is save these stickers to the photos app, and I go back to Good Notes and create a collection there. Now, this sticky notes collection pops up as the first collection here. You can drag it around to rearrange it. You can click and hold it to edit, share, and delete. The clock icon at the beginning are the stickers you recently used. A trick for the elements tool is when you have notes that goes into your notebook over and over again, you can actually save it in the elements. So it's very handy when you need it. With elements, we can even split the screen by clicking this icon at the top right corner here. The next tool is the image tool. Simply click anywhere of the uh, document and choose the picture you want to add in. You can also resize the image if you like. Or you can take a photo and add it. Or just browse the pictures here and click to add it. Okay, here's a new tool that I think they just added. It's typing mode. It basically allows us to type in the full page. Now let's get to the text tool. You can customize the font style, font size, paragraph style, font color, and text box style. I'll show you how it works.
Well, if you set up a phone style that you want to keep, you can save it as default here. Then it will automatically pull up every time. For text, we can even add an external link to it. Okay, now I want to go back to the lasso tool to finish up the setting bit. As you can see, we can choose what type of notes we want to pick up. If I turn images off, now it won't pick up the sticker. So this comes very handy when you are working on notes on pictures. Okay, now I want to show you the zoom window tool. This tool is very helpful if you are trying to write very neatly. The last tool is the laser pointer. This tool is very helpful when you are doing a presentation. When you want to highlight something to your audience, let's say, I'm presenting this project planner to you and I want you now to look at task B, but I don't want to leave a permanent mark here. So I can just use the laser pointer like so. Okay, we're done with our toolbar. Let's get to the navigation bar. Let's start with the three dots at the top right corner. Let's say I want to organize all my projects in the My Projects notebook that I created at the beginning. So I'm going to copy this page and go to the first page of my projects and click the plus icon and paste page. As you can see, you can paste before or after this current page or paste as the last page. Notice the four little square icon at the top left corner. You can also paste the page here as well. I'm going to clear the page to make a few more copies. Now I have three projects and each has a note, note page after it. I'm going to index all these projects so it's easy for me to find them. Let's go to the first project. Add this page to outline. Give it a title. Let's do the same for the other two projects. Okay. Now let's go to outlines. You'll see we can quickly access these pages here. You can delete or rename the titles. So the outlines kind of serves as the index of your document. This feature is very helpful when you are dealing with a document with hundreds of pages and you want to organize it to make it easy to navigate. Okay, now let's look at rotate this page option, which just starts by it says, change template. With this option, you can change your current page to a different template. So it basically just changed the background of the page. It will leave everything else the same. For example, I have some notes on this page and I want to change it to squared page.
My notes are still there. Bear in mind, if you change your own template or any templates you downloaded online to the GoodNotes built-in template, there's no undo for it. You can't change it back. Go to page is helpful when you're navigating a large document. You can quickly jump to a specific page. Move page to trash will delete your current page. If you accidentally delete a page, you can actually recover it by going to settings, trash bin, recover. Now it's back. Scrolling direction. If we change it to vertical, we can keep scrolling like this. I think this is easier if you're working on a large document rather than swiping left. Okay, let's look at the import button. So these are all the GoodNotes templates. The first one is always the current template. You can click on it and it will just add a page that is exactly the same. And you can customize a template. Once you add it, it will automatically pull up here. More from templates does the same as view all templates. You can add an image into your document. Or you can scan a document or take a photo and add in. Or you can import a whole document into your current document. Okay, here's the bookmark icon. You can bookmark any page of your document and all those bookmark pages will pop up here under the Favorites tab. You can also see these pages in the Favorites folder here. Well, you can also bookmark or unbookmark a page from the four little square. Okay, let's get to the four little square icon, which we've already known that we can see all the pages of the current document, those favorite pages, and those pages with quick links and the outlines. There's so much we can organize our documents here, so we can duplicate the selected page or move it to another folder or move it to another document. And we can add page to outline, which I previously have touched on. And we can export it as a PDF image or GoodNotes format. We can open this page in new window. We can delete pages here as well. If we click select, we can also work on multiple pages with these options. The search icon allows us to quickly search through notes in the current document. It can recognize both handwritten notes and text. It will jump right to the page with the search notes in this is the export icon where we can export the current page or the whole document. We can share the document with others by enabling share link to collaborate. And we can click send link, airdrop or message the link to whoever you want to share the link with, or you can copy the link. 
So anyone got the link can open the link and see the document in their good notes. You can turn this button off to unshare it. The last icon we've got here is the audio recording. This is very helpful if you are on a lecture and you need to record what the teacher says or you are on a meeting and you want to record whatever you think is important. Once you are done, just click this icon and you can play the recording here. You can view all your recordings here and you can delete it like so. Now let's get to the main screen of GNOTES where you can organize your documents. As you can see, I've got a bunch of folders here. You can rearrange your folders by date, name or file type. Also, you can have your folders and files in list view by clicking this icon. To edit the folder, you can click the down arrow here and now you can rename the folder, move it to a different location. Open a new window, export the whole folder to a zip file that includes all the individual documents in the folder or delete it. There are different ways you can organize your folders. You can drag a file into a folder like so, and you can drag a folder into another folder. Also, if you click the tick icon at the top right corner, you can select multiple files and do export, duplicate, move, delete with them. At the top left corner, you can select all or deselect all. Notice the star icon at the top right of every folder and document. If I were to click it, it will show up in the favorite folder. As you can see, the page I bookmarked in the My Project document will show up here as well. You can filter what you want to see here by clicking this icon. This is very helpful if you're looking for a document or a particular page. Here we have the search tab where you can search your documents, notes, either handwritten or text. They're both searchable. And it can even search the text in the document, not the ones you typed in. So it's quite a powerful search tool. Okay, now I like to get into the share feature of GNOTES 5. The first time you download GNOTES, it automatically enables the iCloud Sync. So you should be all set to sync your GoodNotes documents on all your Apple devices. If this is not the case for you, what you need to do is to make sure you are signed into the same Apple ID on all your Apple devices. Then you go to Settings, iCloud Settings, turn Use iCloud. Make sure you do this on all your Apple devices Also, you need to make sure your iCloud drive is turned on as well. If you've done all of this, but it's just not working, you can try to restart your iPad or you might have to try to delete GoodNotes and re-download it. Okay, we shared the document earlier and we can see it in the share folder here. So any documents you shared with others, you can see them here. And you can filter the files by these options, which will help you find the files you are looking for. Well, if anyone who has access to the document you shared doing some editing or commenting on your shared document, you'll be notified of the changes here. Okay, let's get to our last part, settings. From the gear icon, we can customize our notebook templates. We can set the default template for our new notebooks here. Let's say 
This is what I want my default notebook looks like. Now every time I create a new notebook, it will always pull up the notebook setup I just made. Let's go back to the notebook templates. You can import your own templates if you like. For example, I'm going to import the um, project planner as my work template. I'll create a group called work and I'll import the project planner. Now we can create a notebook with the project planner as the page template. Here's another trick. You can keep pulling to add new pages. And as you can see, the added new pages are all project planner. Now let's quickly look at the settings. I personally leave it as default. I'll go through those that I think you may want to know. Automatic screen lock means if you turn it off, your screen will stay on as long as you are on GoodNotes. Status bar, if you turn this off, the status bar will disappear when you're working on a document. Auto advance, when it's turned on, it lets you write continuously in the zoom window. As soon as you cross the middle of the zoom window, a blue area will appear both on the left side of the window or on the page. Stylus and pound rejection. You can change the writing posture here to what was best for you. You can change the sensitivity as well. Backup data. If you click backup now, it will start exporting all your files in GoodNotes into a zip file that you can upload it to your Google Drive or save it to your computer for backup. So this is very helpful if you have to delete and redownload your GoodNotes for whatever reason, you can backup all the files and export them back into your GoodNotes. Automatic backup. If you turn this on, you can have your files automatically backup in your cloud storage app. If you delete some noble templates that you want them back, you can go to troubleshooting and restore default templates. Okay, this is quite a comprehensive tutorial. Thank you for sticking with me to the end. I hope you now get a hand of GoodNotes 5 and good luck with making the most of this app. If I missed something about the app or you have any tips and tricks, feel free to leave a comment. Don't forget to give us a like if you like the tutorial. Thank you so much.